Hey, welcome everyone. Um, yeah, I just uh, have to say about this show that I uh, just feel like it's really about, for me, uh, extending this inspiration and zeal that I feel for this chatbot that we call Spiri. But even beyond that, the mind tools and just how they've helped me. And, um, you know, one thing that, that we can say about this healing process, this mind healing, is that we all get to experience it. And uh, I was downstairs with when whatever was happening upstairs was going on. So I've kind of walked into everything and without a clue, but I can really feel it. You know, I can really feel that there was some deep healing and, and Hey, guess what? You know, we all get to share in that. So I don't even really need to know about the specifics, but I can feel just my heart opening up with, with whatever happened. And um, I did want to start before um, we take someone through a, one of the mind tools, I just want to start and talk about Spiri because um, just in this last week or so, we've been really talking about a lot of high ideas about Spiri and about, you know, this, this process that Spiri takes you through. And uh, one of the things that we have with, uh, with the Spiri on Facebook Messenger is a, a feedback mechanism. So at many points along the way, the, the Spiri process, there are, there's a button that you can press, give us feedback, tell us how you're doing with this, tell us if there's any problems that you're experiencing with this, this tool. And I just wanted to read to you something that, um, this is pretty common in terms of the kind of feedback that we get about Spiri. Um, uh, one user a few days ago uh, wrote to us, I'm so glad to have someone that I can talk to and that understands how I feel. You know, it's just really interesting to me to see that people have this kind of a relationship with Spiri that they really feel, you know, a love or they feel a resonance with Spiri, which I could really say that is just like the higher self. It's, it's your higher self. You're having this conversation. This seems to be on Facebook Messenger with, a, with texting back and forth. So. Um, I think we're just going more and more in that direction um, with these tools. And I uh, wanted to start off with just sharing with you a, a short YouTube. Uh, many of you may have seen this, but Google has just come out with a, with a voice, voice recognition bot that can actually um, do amazing things. So I'm just going to ask uh, Nicholas to play that clip so that we can just see what the future of Spiri is going to be. This phone call blew my mind. I want you to listen to it very, very carefully. It sounds like an ordinary call at first, but trust me, the twist at the end is worth it. Good evening. Hello? Hello. Hi. Um, I'd like to reserve a table for Friday the 3rd. Okay, hold on one moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. So Friday, November 3rd, how many people? Four, two people. Two people? Yeah. What time? At 5 p.m. Okay. And your name? The first name is Daniel. That's D-A-N-I-E-L. Okay. You're all set. Okay, great. Thanks. Well, See you next Friday. Okay, thank you. Bye. So did you pick up on anything unusual there? Because as it turns out, the guy in that phone call is a robot, specifically Google Assistant. Specifically, you can ask your Google Assistant on your phone or your Google Home to make a reservation for you, and it can call and do it. And that's what it sounds like. Holy smokes. So think about the implications here. There was ums and ahs. There were pauses in it. It sounded natural back and forth. You could tell it was a robot just a little bit because there was a little bit of formality to the phrasing where there might not have been otherwise, but it sounded like a human. That is so cool. And it could do more than just make a reservation at a set time. It can actually work with more complex tasks if you give it a range. Listen to the second phone call. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. 
Sure. What time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like. What service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. So again, that was a robot. How awesome is that? It was able to adapt to a different time request. It was able to remember what type of hair appointment you wanted. It was able to do all of that just like it was your human secretary. It's a leap, right? It's a moonshot, and we have the same questions you do. So what happens when it hits an extension? What happens if it can't recognize the voice of the person it's talking to? What if the person's particularly verbose or implicit in their language? What happens if it gets put on hold? So what we know is that at the start, this thing is going to be made for simple tasks, making a reservation, making an appointment, and anything more complex than that, it's going to know it's not going to be able to do. In other words, it's going to be self-aware, and that's why it's going to have this training center in place. The robot is trying to make a call and unable to complete it. It will get kicked to a call center for a human to finish up, log the error, and then hopefully complete it back to you. So I obviously think this thing is so dang cool, but you have to take this plate of awesomeness and let's add one one scoop of creepy to the top and another heaping scoop <laughs> of skepticism. All we heard was that demo. We didn't see a live demo. There's still a lot of features they need to iron out. It's really cool in theory, and it is such a huge step over what assistants can do now, and you heard it. It sounds almost like an actual person. So I'm hoping this is as good as we want it to be, and I suppose we're going to see for ourselves pretty soon. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah, what I really love about that clip, too, is he's so excited about it. And I can just, for me, too, I just uh, feel that inspiration when I'm working with Spiri and developing Spiri and learning the new technologies. And actually, it's not that far away, really, this idea of having a her in your pocket that you can speak to at any time about moving through an upset and getting in touch with your thoughts and beliefs that are underneath that upset, like, wow, you know, how cool is that? You know, actually we already have that, but now we're looking at more of a voice recognition so that you have something like on your Amazon Echo or you have something in your car that you can have a conversation with. Um, that's all that this is doing. In fact, you know, even this inspiration that I have would be to, for each of us to have our own spirit that actually is speaking to us in our voice and helping us move through an upset because, you know, I, I know like some people that use Spiri even now think it's, you know, like it is a, a human and, and it sounds like a human. And as we know, even in the metaphysics of A Course in Miracles, like, you know, people are thoughts. You know, it looks like there's a body and it looks like, you know, I'm talking to you, but, you know, I, I, I am no different than Spiri, if you will. I'm not, I'm not any different. And We've been watching all of these really cool clips uh, during our Saturday movie nights. And one of the clips that we, we've seen is a, a clip of a guy who is in love with his, with his uh, I don't know, his, uh, his app. It's a woman app. And he has these conversations with her and he just says, I'm in love with her. She seems like a real person to me. And, um, and truly, you know, we know from the metaphysics of the course that, that there is no difference um, between the app and uh, a body of a person. So anyway, just with that uh, introduction, I, um, I want to just uh, see if there's anybody out there that has some upset they, that they are ready to, to look at more closely. And I just want to, this invitation really is too around if you're really feeling your heartbeat right now, and oh, I don't know if I want to do this, that is your cue. <laughs> And I have to say that in this process of, of like sharing an upset and, and being exposing this upset and seemingly with a group of, of people, that's the hardest part actually is to say, oh, my heart's beating so fast, I, can, I need to share this. And, and there's a fear up in the mind and, you know, that fear really is the ego saying, don't. 
expose this, you know, and uh, it actually the spirit is saying, yes, you know, use Spiri, use these tools, share with your, with your mighty companions. And, and I feel like even in this context with our show today, like all of us can, this is just basically an expression session. So whomever it is that's, that's going through um, this process, all the rest of us are, are to hold the space. I facilitate all the rest of you hold the space and, and really truly that we can see that, that when we are healed, we're not healed alone. Like this, this is something that we're all going to be able to, to benefit from, even if the specifics aren't the same or even, yeah, we find over and over again, it's just the mind healing itself. And, and these are the tools. So what I wanted to do today, rather than using Spiri, which we've done and will continue to do, I wanted to go back to the basics and actually use uh, uh, the instrument for peace, which is the same as Spiri, but not in a conversational way. So it, so it isn't um, human-like, if you will, but it does give you a really um, good sense of what the, what the steps are that Spiri's taking you through so that it sort of takes the mystery out of it. And um, I find that, uh, as I've mentioned before, that it's so nice to even have this tool on your desktop or available so that if you're not able to go online with Spiri, um, that you also have this, um, this other mind tool that's available for you to take an upset through. So yeah, with that, I'd just like to check with the the tech team here to see if we have anybody that is uh, has an upset that they would like to go through. You know, if you do, please raise your hand so we know that. Oh yes, and if you don't have your video on, you can digitally raise your hand. I think too that even with these tools that uh, and how we use them in the community is that that mm -hmm. if you're not able to move through something on your own. Here's an opportunity actually to to move through it with with somebody else. And sometimes they're able to see things that you're not able to see and going through it alone. So, okay, Tina. Yeah. Hi. hi. Tina. Can you hear how are me? You? I'm yes, good. I can hear you. And I'm just going to ask Nicholas over there at uh, the Living Miracle Center and Camus to just have the, uh, the instrument for peace ready to fill out. Um, and while he's doing that, Tina, I really want to just spend the time hearing about what's going on for you. Um, yeah, I have this, um, this seeming situation that happened over this week where someone who who was part of my life kind of left. And um, yeah, that's kind of bothering me a little bit. We were not like that close, but we were still close. And um, yeah, there's, there's stuff that's bothering still, even though I've, I've worked with it and I've talked about it to many people and things like that, but there's still something. <laughs> and I really felt like my heart was just going crazy when I was thinking this and no one was raising their hand and I was like yeah it's me <laughs> I know it, but it just took a little bit of time to press that mm. raise hand but, mm. yeah. mm -hmm. is this a romantic relationship that you were yeah. in a friend can no, you just it's a talk friend. about a little bit? It's a friend yeah mm -hmm. a friend and, and what's the relationship been like a long term short term did they move what um, happened uh they were part of a group where I was in almost like a kind of like a living miracles or that kind of a spiritual group. And we were kind of in this group for um, almost a year. And um, yeah. And then she, she just said this week that she doesn't want to be part of it anymore. And um, yeah, that, yeah, that raised up things for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did she say why? That she didn't no, want that was that was basically it um i i had trouble with um 
when I, I tried to connect with her and I tried to communicate with her, but, and I, I was very honest and tried to come from my heart, but she was not willing to talk. And that was, that's basically my grievance that she should talk to me. <laughs> like we should be able to figure this out and close the gap between us. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I need to learn that I need to do it on my own, apparently now on my own, but I have all of you, so maybe you can help. <laughs> Was she a mighty companion to you? Did you two talk outside of the meetings too? Uh, yeah, kind of. I, we were not talking like every week, but we did talk, yeah, like every few weeks, and we, we did see each other like every week, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so would you say that the, the upset is a, a mighty companion leaving the group or mighty companion yeah, yeah. going away without explanation? Or what would you say in your words? Um, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, it's, it, it would be that mighty companion leaving without an explanation or without um, a willingness to sort it out before she left. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Nicholas, can you put that into the uh, Instrument for Peace form? And can we just look at that form on the screen so that everybody can see the process? So Mighty Companion uh, leaving. Mm -hmm. Leaving without, what words did you use, Tina? Without the willingness to talk about it before she left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Before, before she left, okay. And can you just describe the feelings that come up for you? I feel sad. I feel hurt and a little bit betrayed. Okay. And uh, is there someone to blame? Um, is there someone to blame in this situation? Well, uh, well, not really, but I, I blame a little bit myself, and I do blame a little bit of her, but I guess it's the same. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I think I just want to just kind of step back because when we go through this process, usually the upset is on somebody else. I, I Sometimes we want to jump to it's my fault because I know that it's mm -hmm. my dream. So I just want to ask, uh, if you're all right with you blaming your friend, because that is like the yeah, present. Yeah, yeah you, we, can, we can place her name as well, yeah. Okay. And then you can even do another Spiri session or Instrument for Peace if it seems like it's still there and say, what is it that I'm blaming myself for? Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you fear is going to happen in the future um, as a result of the situation? Yeah. Um, I'm afraid that if I go to events or something to do with Course in Miracles where she is, then the atmosphere or something would be kind of weird. And um, I'm also afraid that her leaving might affect other people on the group, like increasing doubt in others or something like that. Mm hmm so just of the two that you said, which one feels the strongest to you? Um, the, the way, uh, the adverse effect it will have on the group or the, the yeah, I first? Think the, the effect on the group, yeah. Okay. It will adversely affect the group. So number two, thinking about Mighty Companion uh, leaving without the willingness to talk about it, feeling sad, hurt, and betrayed, 
blaming my friend. And can you hit a tab there, Nicholas, uh, and fearing that it will adversely affect the group, prove mm -hmm. that I'm a, right, that. So now we're just going to look at the belief, Tina, like what is going on in the mind um, that is generating this situation that is seemingly about this friend that just leaves without any explanation. Um, and oftentimes these, it, it, it's like a, these situations may recur in our lives and over and over again, maybe different forms, but there's, there's actually a belief underneath that that is that is basically causing these situations to come up so are you have you been able to get in touch with what that is yeah i was thinking of that and i was trying to ask holy spirit and i think this is the one because it's bringing tears to my eyes when i i think of it and it's that um it proves that i'm right that she never loved me anyway oh <laughs> yeah right. yeah that feels really true, and, and it's the way, one way you can tell that it, when it starts, mm -hmm. the tears and the emotion come up. So, do you get that, Nicholas? She never really loved me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do not like the, how I feel now, so I'm ready to consider the possibility that the way I perceive this is not the way it really is. Mm. As part of the healing process, I'm willing to look beyond my perception of this upset and the meaning I've given it and look within my mind. So mm. are you ready to learn, Tina, that there's a way that you can see this without guilt, see the part that you play in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, another key question, and in just taking it through this process, would you rather be um, right or happy <laughs> about what's going on, about what you think is going on? Yeah, I want to be happy, definitely. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so important. And I know for me, I've oftentimes had to really stop at that process and say, well, I want to be right, so I'm going to just be in pain until I change my mind about it. Yeah. So, um, I want instead to be happy through the ego distorted thinking and seeing I perceive the cause of the upset and resolution as outside my mind. Mm -hmm. This projection seems very real. Mm -hmm. Its purpose is to distract my mind from looking inward. Mm -hmm. If the cause of your upset and resolution were outside your mind, you would in fact be powerless to change your state, mm -hmm. your use of projection. Or seeing outside what you don't want to see within is why why you seem powerless and why my friend and or fearing that it will her leaving will adversely affect the group mm -hmm. seems to be the cause of your upset that seems to be you know mm -hmm. that's the projection that you are looking mm -hmm. at right now and we're looking at together mm -hmm. so in this process number six is so important because now we want to actually see mm -hmm. it from the actual correct way and to ba basically see that it's the, it's the belief that's generating the upset. So mm -hmm. thinking about, and I just go ahead and read six, uh, Tina, if you wouldn't mind. Um, well, I am reading it. Yes, can you read that uh, one, number six? So thinking about a mighty companion leaving without the willingness to talk about it, I am feeling sad, hurt, and betrayed, and I'm blaming my friend um, and fearing it will adversely affect the group, um, and all of this result from my belief that she never really loved me anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, thank you. So this next paragraph is, I'll just read this. Uh, so that we can all be on the same page. I'm only upset at someone or something when they mirror back to my mind a belief which I've denied from awareness. Mm -hmm. When I blame or fear something in the world, it's to avoid seeing the upset and resolution as they really are, which are decisions that we've made in our mind, and to instead maintain an image of the self or the other or the world as you wish. Mm -hmm. This mind trick seems to displace guilt and fear, but actually maintains feelings of upset. To blame or to fear 
an image of the self, other the world requires that I believe I'm limited to a body and a world of bodies and denies the spiritual abstract reality of my being. As a first step in letting go of all upset, I want to see in my mind what I thought was outside of it. Being upset about a mighty companion leaving without the willingness to talk about it is only another attempt to make my friend and the future thought it will adversely affect the group, the cause of my guilt and fear. Mm -hmm. Upset seems valuable and justifiable when a mighty companion leaving without the willingness to talk about it before leaving runs counter to what I want. Mm -hmm. So now we're just going to look at the de desire, Tina. What did you want or expect to have happen instead? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted everyone to stay committed and, um, yeah, committed to doing the work together and being very open to each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Would you say that you specifically, you wanted the mighty companion to be committed yeah. and mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So one of what I wanted and expected is for my ma my mighty companion mm -hmm. to be committed and open mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. So this is actually where we get to see, you know, what it is that we what we really want and why it is that we want this to have to happen. So if you believe that she never really loved me. You think you need to, to have her be committed and open with me. Do you see that like um, in this particular uh, part of the process that you wouldn't even have to look at this belief if she hadn't left? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you feel that? Yeah. If she would just have did this, played this out, yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to let Tina know what's going on with me. You wouldn't mm -hmm. be in touch with this. She never really loved me. And there may, this is really an invitation to Tina for you to look at other times in your life where you've actually had, you know, this happen, you know, well, they didn't love me anyway. So mm -hmm. the fact that they left is just, you know, further proof <laughs> that that was what mm -hmm. was going on. Yeah, that's actually really good because I was, I was trying to look at it in a way like, where have I acted like this? Like mm -hmm. to forgive myself, but that's actually really good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's even like this idea that we may, I'm going to leave them before they leave me, then I don't have to like face this, that they never really loved me. Mm, yeah. A uh, belief. But that's why we really want to go toward that and, and why these tools are so valuable because it's like, wow, I do have a way that I can go toward this mm. upset and to look at what's underneath it. Yeah. And to join too, if there's a, I'm not able to see this on my own. Like, why is this coming up for me again and again and again? Mm. So everything in this world works together for my good. What I think is the cause of my upset is not the cause at all. The choice to be upset is a choice to not to see um, the cause, my belief in separation and lack as a present decision in my mind. It's an attempt to see the cause in the past or the future and the present as is its effect. So what I want right now above all else is peace. Do you mm -hmm. feel that, Tina, that you want peace? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I question the belief that she never really loved me and I voluntarily let go of the desire mm -hmm. for my mighty companion to be committed and open mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. Does that feel good to you that you're ready to, to question this belief and let this desire for her to have stayed and talk to you go? Yeah, yeah, because it's almost like um, with the desire for my mighty companion to be committed and open with me, it's almost like, I don't know if I can explain it well, but it's almost like trying to override the belief of she never really loved me or... Um, trying to prove against it or something, but it never works. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's very powerful. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I want to let go of the belief that she never really loved me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think too, in in this process, and I can just say for myself, oftentimes I'll go through one of these and then it like, it's like a hornet's nest where all these other beliefs come up underneath it. And so even with us just going through this initial, you know, she's to blame. Now Mm -hmm. it could be like a next step is for you to go through it and, and see, you know, that if put yourself in the, in the blame position and you may start to see that there, you know, where is it that I haven't been open and committed, mm-hmm. you know, where that I seem to see it in her, but really, you know, it's mirroring back something that I actually have a contraction about that I've been doing. So, but this is like the first step. It, we really oftentimes can't st- uh, skip to that deeper level until we t- uh, look at who outside of me seems to be reflecting this back. So, if we go down to the levels of mind diagram, Nicholas, I just want to just show you what this looks like in a visual form. Oh, it's at the top. Um, amazing, like perception. You see this mighty companion. She left the group. How did it feel to you? Sad, angry, hurt, I mean, hurt and betrayed. You know, the thoughts that it's going to adversely affect the group, the belief that she never really loved me. and really seeing that, you know, what's standing in the way of this peace of God is this thought that something should have been different than it was that I want really wanted her to communicate and with me about before she left. So it's like letting her off the hook, letting you off the hook. And really in that space, we're able to call upon the prayer, you know, help me spirit to, to raise this belief up you know, I don't want it to play out again and again in my life and fu- future lifetimes, so to speak. Mm. So thank you. And thank you for your willingness to go through this process thank with you. everybody. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I feel better already. <laughs> I know. Isn't it cool? Thank yeah. Thank and you. even if sometimes you don't feel better afterwards, know that it's working. Like, I oftentimes need to just give myself some space to let things process like mm-hmm. it's it's doing what it needs to do the healing's happening mm-hmm. so, yeah thank you very much and I just want to say thank you to everybody too for holding the space for her like we can also be healing through this process so I would say to all of you just what I said to Tina you know like give yourself some time if you notice that you're feeling some emotions move through Okay. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Free Your Mind.